All right, what's up, guys? We're back with another podcast episode. This week, we're going to be talking about the Dinks Pickleball Box. I've got Ooh. a bone to pick, which... Oh, just you wait, guys. Will doesn't even know what this is. No, we're going to be let's... talking about <laughs> the Dink Awards, which oh. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a second bone I got to pick with at least two different groups of people. The Chuck two. Ball, some... Le- oh, you'll see, Will. Just you wait. The oh, Chuck gosh. Ball, a lesson I took. Uh, Ben's back in video. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about. It's going to be a fun episode. I'm All flying right. in blind, guys. I don't know anything for this week. <laughs> yes. And for these first, this first one, it's perfect. That's how I want it. All oh, right, gosh. Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. You ready for my bone to pick? Oh, gosh. I don't this know. This was perfect timing. <laughs> Dale, Dale from Six Zero messages me 10 yeah. minutes before we're about to record this pod. I'm the just setting up. Six Zero. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. I, ha- I happen to see a Discord message. I go, oh, what's this? And oh. what do you know? It's a picture of a paddle he's got coming up. And uh, oh. I, I know, I know you're very familiar with this paddle. I and am? you want to know what, How guys? How would I know? Wait, what is it? What is it, guys? What is it? It's an this elongated power. double black diamond, which, oh. you know, that's cool. People have been yeah. waiting for it. Yeah. But I noticed yeah. yes. there was a second logo next to the Sig Zero logo. Oh, yes, there is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to tell people what that logo is since I know you know? <laughs> All right, guys. It's my logo. Woo! How does it feel, Chris? Mm, in your face. I have so many questions. So let me, let me just... You know wait, wait. Say, Are you ahead. allowed to talk about this right now? Like, uh, yes, go, I like, approved it. Yep. Oh, you I made approved sure it. we talk about this. I've, you have no idea. I've been trying to keep tight-lipped about this for so long. And the day you found out, which is you know apparently today, is the day that I can die happy. Yes. Here's my question. So let me yeah. get this straight. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. As, as far as I can recall from memory, yes. I was the first first of the major reviewers to review uh-huh. the Six Zero Double Black Diamond. I gave it a glowing review. In fact, it even won an award in my 2023 yeah, Paddle Yeah, you even awards. played with it for like probably the better half of a year. I'm still using it. Like between that and the Harache, like I still bounce between them both. Like... Still think it's a great paddle. So let me get this straight. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest advocates on planet Earth for that paddle. Mm-hmm. And somehow, Will never even liked the double black diamond. What? And what? somehow, <laughs> and somehow, and and on top of that, hang on, I'm not even done yet. On top of that, not only did he never care for the double black diamond, Will literally works for Selkirk. We call him the Shilkirk on this channel. <laughs> and somehow, I've never heard my that logo... Name. I'm I'm making it a thing now. If I'm the three five, you're Shill Kirk. <laughs> so I'd like yeah. I would love to, to. The world is not fair. That's what I learned today. Oh, uh, I need to go. I need to see the comments on the Discord now. I haven't even checked in on that. But hey, you know what it is, Chris. Some people, some people just got it like that, and apparently <laughs> you're not one of them. You know, it is what it is. All right. Uh. Clearly, Dale knows who. You know, Dale clearly knows who's the more influential person you know between the both of us and between you know across all the other paddle influencers apparently you know suddenly i think i'm starting to like other paddles i kind of think the (laughs) the double black diamond's a really bad paddle i think is uh it's kind of weird like all of a sudden i just stopped liking that paddle it's i don't know why but (laughs) (laughs) all right we'll we'll flash the photo of the paddle on screen yeah uh and like a backstory for all you listening out there yes you, Chris, were the first person, I think, to review it and gave it a glowing review. And it is a good paddle. I was, I mean, I thought it was good, but it wasn't my favorite paddle at the time or anything. I preferred the Black Diamond. I still prefer the Black Diamond now. However, when I first talked to Dale, during that time, we were discussing about the paddle. And because at that point in time, uh, you know, he was one of the first companies to release like the new super fine peel ply, you know, thermoforming and unibody construction was just kind of taking off. So obviously I had some long conversations with him and uh, within those conversations, I just told him and I ble- begged him, pleaded with him to create an elongated shape. And I said, I would like this probably more if it was truly elongated. And then uh, we we're going back and forth about the design. And essentially I didn't know he was working on it, but I mean, when we went to that uh, event that he hosted in Dallas, he showed the prototype. And 
to be quite honest with you, like, yes, I had something to do with it. And it was like a joke, right? The joke was that he was calling it the Willinator because it was essentially my idea and I helped design it. And honestly, it came out of the blue. I didn't even ask him to to do this, to like, you know, put my logo on it. But Dale being, I guess, the great guy that he is, and apparently he likes me a lot. I don't know. It depends who you ask. Depends which <laughs> one of the two you ask if Dale's a great guy right now. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, um, it wasn't, um, him per se, but, uh, it was, I don't know Bodhi's exact title, uh, over at Six Zero, but Bodhi works with Dale and for Six Zero. He's stationed here in the States and he's kind of like his, um, you know, North American, I guess, right hand man. And Bodhi asked me for my logo. And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And I gave it to him. I didn't know what it was, but, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, they're doing a collab. You know, it's like, I don't know if it's going to be limited run or, or whatnot, but he's doing it with me and I'm totally stoked. I didn't ask for it and I'm forever, you know, grateful and pleased. I think very pleased that I got it over you. And, plus, you know, like, here's the thing, Chris. Okay. You couldn't, there's no way he was going to put your logo on it because of who you are. You are, you know, the, the person who builds the most trust with their audience, you know, who is not associated really with any paddle brand. Me, on the other hand, you know, I'm employed by Selkirk. My heart is, you know, with bread and butter. You know, I'm going to be <laughs> playing with this, you know, double or triple black diamond or whatever he's going to call it with my logo on. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> all right. That's all I'm saying. Some people might say that I have no loyalties, but here's the thing. I'm the most loyal person out there. And the thing is, is that it's not that I'm loyal to these brands. I'm loyal to the people behind these brands. I'm loyal to pickleball in general. So you know what I'm saying? I rock uh, it all. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm gonna give this paddle such a terrible review when I get it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I mean, <laughs> can't. But here's the thing. Nothing. All right. All right. I just. I actually. I hope that it's good. And I actually. I don't know. There's a part of me that hopes that you like it, but a part of me that hopes that you don't. But I think it'd be so hilarious if it was so good that you'd actually decided to switch to it. But my logo is on. I'm like, that's right, Chris. Who's Paddle uh, you play with? Ooh. That would kill me. I would I would sharpie Ooh. your logo off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay. I'm telling you, my reaction when I got this message from Dale, I was like, uh -huh. what the <laughs> frick is that logo? <laughs> <laughs> It just cracks me up so much. I was like, wow. I was like, I must be on backwards day or something here. I was like, does, does he want to give like a Yola a logo on his paddles too while he's at it? I mean, this might be the beginning of some, maybe like, you know, every other year or something like that. I do a collab with, you know, a different company. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But it's given me ideas. And I did see it kind of like ahead of everybody. And I think, and I did have a little bit of input on some of the design choices. Um, so if you guys out there hate the way that it looks, that's my fault, I'm sorry, whoops. <laughs> but I think it looks pretty sweet. This kind of feels like I was yeah. like dating a girl and I found out that that girl was also dating you at the same time and then chose you and yeah, broke no. up with me. Oh yeah, I'm Mr. Steal Your Girl apparently in this <sighs> situation, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Ed Jew, just give me a call. I, you know, I've been looking for a new podcast co-host anyways. I think so now you, might be the time. You know you can't replace me off this pod. I'm sorry. You already know. Because how else would you get stories like this? Mm -hmm. The sad part is, it, well, then Ed would probably just get his logo on the six. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just another Selkirk guy. Maybe he just likes giving Selkirk employees that logo. <laughs> Okay, anyways, we can move on. I thought that was actually hilarious. I do think it's actually very cool, though, that, like, you had some invo involvement on it and that this collab's happening. Like, I feel like we we haven't really seen that happen with a reviewer yet. I think it's probably largely something that just hasn't been discussed. I think it could have happened in the past, but it will be yeah. kind of cool to see, like, a limited run and, like, I feel like this will be, like, a little paddle history for you. You'll be like, look, yeah, yeah, my exactly. logo was on a paddle. Right, right. I had something to do with the, you know, development of a paddle. So, I mean, this is not going to be, this is not the first time. This is not the last time. I mean, I got this paddle collab. Obviously, I'm doing the ADV bag collaboration. Uh, still have some. I'm going to make ADV slap my logo 
on whatever <laughs> bag you designed in terms of color. And I'm going to be like, just blast my logo all over this thing. You know something? I can ask Lavi. Maybe he'll, he'll I'll put it a good word, you know, for you with Lavi. <laughs> Maybe it'll happen. Because, you know, apparently I'm the more influential, you know, paddle reviewer, YouTuber, whatever you want to call it, of the two of us, you know, so it's, it's okay. You it's know. already gone to his head. I'll send it's you an invoice. I'll send you an invoice, Chris. It's okay. Got gotcha. you. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, that was funny. We're going to move on to something that we were actually, we both got sent these, like, I think before ago. 2024, but then, you know, we took our break from the pod yeah. and then we had to get back and to you it. you are talking about the dink box. box. Yeah, the, oh, just kidding. It's the pickleball box. By the dink. Well, I always call it the yeah, dink box. Yeah, by the dink. Yes. By the dink. Yes. Okay. So yeah. this thing, you might even have to pull the details up because I'm a terrible host of this podcast apparently and didn't grab these information uh -huh. but it's basically a subscription box guys where yes. the dink has this thing and i think it's every three months you get a bunch of items in a box personally i have never bought one of these before i have mm -hmm. never been into subscription boxes or that type of service so i'm just gonna say it right now that i'm probably gonna be skeptical of whatever is in here a little bit yeah but we'll see i maybe i'll be surprised <clears throat> this but i'll tell you right now my wife sarah Mm -hmm. These types of things have her name all over. In fact, when I got it and she realized what it was, yeah. she was like, can I please open it? And I was like, I'm not supposed to see what's in it yet. And she was so excited that she was like, just let me open it and look through it and I won't tell you what's in it. And then for several days, she was like, there's something in it? there that I really want. Wait, but how does I she know? Because I let her open it so that oh. she could see it, but I didn't see what was in it. <clears throat> Why didn't you just and record your wife opening it? That would have been hilarious. I... Probably should have, to be honest, but I was so dead set on this being done on a pod yeah, that I was like, I see, you know. I see. Well, I actually did that. I let my friend Tubi open it while I was back home in Washington, D.C., and I recorded, and that video will come out uh, sometime this week if it hasn't already come out by the time that you guys are listening to this right now, and it was kind of funny, pretty funny, actually. All right. Well, I'm going to grab the box here and we'll just go through this. I'm All very right, curious. All right, a live unboxing. Yep. And for those of you who don't know, the subscription box, it's about uh, $65 uh, uh, billed quarterly or like it's like $75 uh, for a one-time purchase of the box. And Is that really what it says on the website? I thought it was more. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm looking it up right now, and that's what it says. And the new box is shipped every three months. So uh, 75 bucks a box if you pay like ahead of time. And then like if you pay it as you go each quarter when the box is supposed to come out, it's 75 bucks. And also, shout outs to um, Fit to Serve. I think it's, uh, was it Mr. Slaughter? Evan Slaughter? He did, I don't know if you've seen it, but he has a few, uh, uh, I guess, short form content talking about the pickle box and it's pretty funny i thought i thought oh, he did a hilarious i actually job. haven't seen those it's pretty funny he's like hey you like pickleball and he's like you know going to the courts pretending like you know to di shill out what stuff in the box you like this oh, hey man, you can get this funny. too you know it's a subscription you just go to the dink.com and you can buy it buy it for yourself it's pretty funny huh? all <laughs> right well let's go ahead and take a look at this thing first thing uh -huh. we've got here is a stack athletic hat uh mm -hmm. yet again i can see that this is just trying to be a trenches melon hat and um <laughs> this your boy the melon the non-sponsored melon, melon guy yeah I'll, we can call me the melon show i'll take that uh, title because it's true it ain't the same the sniff test it's not the same but <laughs> you know what this. this is for most of you this is probably a fine hat but that's a pretty clean i'll stick to hat. my melon hat it is yeah it looks pretty good um this one who is this one by Make sure you I show can't the tell camera, who, Chris. I am. Uh, I can't tell who this hat's by, but this is definitely not a hat I would ever wear. Because oh, really? Why not? It's just a it's regular just very, dad hat. It's very flimsy feeling. I mean, I'm sure if you like a lightweight hat, this is fine, but not not for me. All right, I promise I won't dunk <laughs> on everything man, in this box. This, it just happened to be hats, is, which I'm very particular about. And now he's particular about. Look what I've done. I don't know what I've done to you. I gave this you is one your hat. Fault. You're I right. never cared about hats until you. I know. I gifted you one, and now, yeah, I've created a monster. Yep. Next up. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is like some sunscreen. It's called Z-Block, and mm. it says with clear zinc. So I imagine this has a lot of zinc, which, uh, fun fact, uh, my wife has to use sunscreen with zinc, so this actually Wait, is why perfect is that? for her. Why is that? Uh, it's like something, It's I don't know if she's like allergic, but... It, yeah, she just has problems if it's like not pure zinc. So that might be really good for her. 
Um, all right, right here we've got a pickleball cocktail. Oh, actually, there's a bunch of in stuff in here. There's so, some magnesium in there, I think. Yep, MagSooth, Electrolyte. There's a bunch of them in here. Probably looks like it's about like 10 to 12 packets in there. Is that Jigsaw? Was it Jigsaw that was in there? Yeah, or? Jigsaw. Gotcha. Okay. Which, um, unfortunately, yeah, yet again, I am an element loyalist, so. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> so funny. It's the two things. Like, the two things that I'm probably the most picky about right now yeah, happen that, to be, the, like, first things I unbox. Yeah, and paddles, apparently. And that's why you didn't get your logo on one. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. On to the oh, next one. On to the next one. Oh, my one. gosh. All right. Uh, this is, it says, it's an ice shaker. It looks like it's a just 26-ounce sports bottle. You know what? Let's just open it out of the actual box. It's a Walter Bottle. My Bolton. office is going to be so messy after this unboxing. <clears throat> oh, that actually, I mean, that actually feels like a pretty good bottle, to be honest. Like, it feels like it's made pretty well. I mean, I could, like, that make, put tank. my protein shake in this. Did yeah. you get one in yours? Yeah, and it was a oh. tank. Yeah, it is the, kind uh, of a tank. Yeah, it is a tank, but the handle on it, I feel like, is a little flimsy on the on oh, top of the lid. it has a reusable straw. Yes. Interesting. You can detach uh, the straw, I believe. I'd rather not use yeah. the straw. I'd rather have like just a chug cap because sometimes, you know, you're playing hard and you need to get that water. You need to get uh, hydrated and the straw just in not cutting it. Fair. Well, that, that water bottle, actually, you know, that actually seems pretty nice. Oh, it's, wow. Okay. Water bottles are not. A <laughs> <laughs> comment on the product coming out of the box. What we got next? Yeah. Three, three Franklin balls. I mean, I guess. I mean, balls are always <laughs> nice to have, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the more <laughs> after your rant last week about yeah, the yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, please send Chris more balls. Oh, that's funny. Oh, hey, some OS first socks. I'm actually okay. You know what? I'm actually excited to try this out. I haven't used OS first socks, but I've now tried Thorlo, Darn Tough, one other company that I'm totally blanking on, but I actually like their socks and. Apparently not wow. enough because you don't know their name. <laughs> uh, dude, I know. Their socks are actually pretty good, though. And then Lasso socks. So I actually am kind of curious to see these. <coughs> that's the I one that, uh, that's the one where all the pros kind of sponsored. Isn't Ignatowicz and... Yeah, Fred James, Lowe. Jay, Jesse. They just liked all the people with J's in their name, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I just now connected that dot. That's kind of funny. All right. Uh, moving on. What is this? This is... What the heck is this? Uh, oh, are these? Oh, What's that? I what think these are protective swank? eyewear. Yeah, Swank. Swank. No, I think those, the ones I got were just regular ah, sunglasses. They're sunglasses. Okay, yeah. interesting. Well, all right. I mean, they seem like okay sunglasses. I'll hold them up, I guess, and make sure people can see. No, man, you got to put them on. You got to put them on, Chris. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. But now the people listening, you know, they can't see, and now it's kind of weird. It's okay. I can tell the people listening how bad you look in them. Actually, right, you look pretty tell good me. in them. Hit me with yeah. it, Will. Yeah. You Give look me, like... Rate, rate, me, rate me on a scale of 1 to 10. You see me in a bar from yeah. afar? You see me 3. like this? 3.5. Oh, shoot. That's all I get? <laughs> Come on, you saw that coming. Are you kidding I, me? I, I Are you actually kidding didn't, me? but that's really funny. There's no way. Anybody who's yeah. listening right there like, oh, Will's going to rate Chris. Come on. There's just no way there's any other number. That's <laughs> very funny. Okay, that was that was kind of silly of me to not see coming. Hang on. I think there might be... Oh, uh, it's just a cleaning cloth. Okay. All right, moving on. There's only a few things left. Some Vulcan grips. Um, uh -huh. Interesting how they cut the packaging, like... The corners are cut off a little bit, you know, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Leave it leave it to Vulcan. Not great paddles, not a great ball. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's good old day. Was that's that bad? So I'm bad. sorry. I don't know. That's so bad. I'm oh, sorry, that's... Jay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's really funny. Okay. Some lead tape from Pickle. Um, and then Which what pickle else? is that? Oh, hey. Wait, which pickle is that? <laughs> PCKL. PCKL. Not to be confused with... P K K L and I forgot the others, but I know there's a bunch P I K K L P K O L. Oh gosh. P K O L L and yeah, P C K L. Oh hey, twenty dollar Selkirk gift card. I'll probably just give this to a friend because I'm not gonna need that. No, 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 no. Let's let's like we have it right now. Give it to a friend, dude. Just uh, do a giveaway right now. Yeah, but it's such a hassle to ship it. 
<laughs> you can just tell them the oh, code. Oh, wait, I could just tell them the code. You're right. You can just tell them the code. Yes, tell them the code, Chris. All Let's right. see, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? How should you decide? Hmm. I don't even know. Hang Beige on. Well, last, last thing in here seems like some Ooh. kind of uh, Fila zip up, quart like quarter zip. Yeah, quarter zip hoodie. So, I mean, to be honest, with what's in that box, for I thought it was much more. I thought the box was like 140 or something, but for it was like $65 if you uh Yeah. Yeah. Pay quarterly. Build it yeah, pay quarterly or yeah, build quarterly. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like the value that you the stuff in the box was actually probably did exceed that. My skepticism with boxes like this is that you probably aren't getting your actual value most of the time, but this actually was surprisingly better than I thought, to be honest. Well, I mean, yeah, but also they sent it to like you and me, so they could have definitely just cherry picked some that stuff. That is to send for to sure you. true. <clears throat> that if any is... you guys if any of you guys out there got this box, let us know what you got in the box and you think it was worth what you paid for it. And I would just be curious to hear or see if the contents were different from what we got. But most yeah. of the contents that I got were like the same as yours. Maybe some of the colors were perhaps a little different, but essentially they were the same from what I remember. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, overall seemed pretty good. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I've heard Dig makes it sound like it's selling well. So, I mean, maybe it is. But for, yeah, for the stuff I got in there, I'll give it, I'll give it decent. Probably still not something that I would personally ever buy. But if you're into subscription boxes and you like being surprised with stuff like my wife does, then good box. Yeah. And if you're not into subscriptions, just the one subscription that you should be into is the subscription that subscribes you to the Pickleball Studio podcast and the Pickleball Studio YouTube channel and Pickleball Wheels YouTube channel. Uh, maybe not that Pickleball Wheel one. You can you can miss that one. That's fine. <laughs> oh, man. Chris is a hater. He hates me. It's the best okay. podcast ever. <laughs> let's, let's move on to the Dink Awards. Oh, cause... the next big bone to pick, probably. So, okay. I, it was a bone to pick until I found out that Thomas was teasing us. And then I was like, ah, okay. That makes way more sense. So Tell on PicklePod, all the results hadn't been out yet, but they had mentioned on there like a bunch of the awards for different things and they get to podcast and they start going yeah, yeah. through them. And I uh -huh. think it was like, uh, they won. So you know that. <laughs> you <laughs> already know if the Dink yeah. wins their own contest that it's rigged. That's messed up for sure. And then after that, it was like, I can't remember exactly in what order, but I think it was like KOTC, Brionis, uh, It Feels Right. And then they listed literally every other pod in existence. And then uh -huh. they get to us and they're like, yeah, Chris and Will, like they just, their percentage was so low that it's kind of just like a rounding <laughs> error. And I texted him. <laughs> I texted him and I was like, bro, there is no way on earth, no way on earth we ranked below James's podcast. There is no flipping way. And then I think I made some joke. I was like, big pickle rigged this for sure. And uh, he he made a whole tweet about it on Twitter. It was actually very funny. I love bantering with Thomas. I think he's, he's oh very funny. Gosh. The funny thing is that you thought that we were actually like you believed him and i was like there's no way he's got to be messing with you dude you i know? totally i totally believed him and then you when i saw the results so posted online gullible. we got fifth and yeah. now here's where my actual bone goes to pick because i love uh -huh. the dink words i actually think it's a very cool concept i'm glad they do it my bone to pick guys audience uh -huh. you guys comment every week seems like you like this pod we love interacting with you guys but where were you how did we you guys couldn't get us past fifth place. I mean, come on, we were only <laughs> we were only a few percentage points off. Like we were like zero point five percent off from being oh, third. From being third, so we. Yeah. So what were the what was the actual ranking? Tell me. Uh, from like first to fifth or whatever. Yeah, give me the top five. Let's go. It was Picklepod, KOTC, Brionis. Uh, it might have been it feels right, and then us. Okay. All right. Yeah, totally rigged. No, but kidding. it was like <laughs> third to fifth. All of us got 11% of the votes, but it was like 11.6, 11.3, and then like 11%. Dang, we were that close. That's my bad because I didn't even That's... vote for us. Oh, did you even <laughs> vote? No. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> your vote could have been the difference. You're, uh, you're the reason we didn't make the podium. It's, just it's, just like all the tournaments we competed. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. But yeah, seriously, guys, right. come on. Uh, next year, I expect better. I think had we actually been podcasting in January, you know, we probably could have brought some awareness. That's also our own fault. But thought oh, I'd, I I thought I'd have a little tease. Think with about that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, this was, uh, you know. They were just mad at us. Our audience was just mad at us. They're like, there's no way I'm voting for Chris in the world. They weren't even <laughs> podcasting month of January. They were denied us. And so That's they're like, I'm going to so put funny. my vote somewhere else. Uh, ah. hey, they they did the classic <laughs> thing, took your money elsewhere. Except The people have spoken. It's all good. We yes. still love you guys. All love here. Yes. But really, agreed. though, Thomas and Zane won their own thing. That's whack. Come That's on. what I'm saying. You know, like... That feels, that feels sketchy. Uh, you mean it doesn't feel right? I'm sure that's what Adam Stone said <laughs> in his pod. That's know. really funny. Yeah. Adam, let them know. Let them know what's up, Adam. Please, please. That's right. Okay. Anyways, moving on. Uh, I don't have a lot of paddle updates this week. I'm really only working on uh, the Volare Forza Mach 2 review next. I think that's a really nice paddle. Um, and so no notes. I've talked plenty about that. Uh, but I did want to talk about a ball since yes, now this is like the third week I in a row we're talking about balls. Last week about it, then you finally put some time into it. The gamma yep. chuck ball. Yes, the chuck ball. So we again, we've already established that the Vulcan ball is not great. Goes ever I have used like five of my twelve and they all go out around within just a couple games. Isaac and I have been using the chuck ball. I think we've done five drill sessions where that is our only ball. And we use it for about an hour and a half. Uh And the ball is still going strong. No cracks, nothing. Isaac likes the ball, and I feel like he's kind of picky. And I've not had issues. Like, I haven't really thought about, like, where I would place it on the scale of, like, you know, Franklin Dura, the classic thing. I'm sure the answer is also probably going to be that it's somewhere in between, to be honest. But Mm -hmm. I've been hitting with it and haven't had any complaints. I'm not going to say it's the best ball out there, but it's fine. To me, it's very similar <clears throat> to the Franklin, a little like more similar to the Franklin. And I think it, uh, I won't say it's faster, but I think it gets more spin, at least like a fresh new ball. I just felt like I was like, oh, this one is, is dipping kind of quick. But mm, yeah, I had no complaints about it. I liked it. Um, speaking I of I would ball, play with it. Yeah, I would play with it. Speaking of ball, I have this quick little story. Did you see the comment oh wait no i think you commented on it remember on uh uh what should you call it king of the court podcast right there's somebody there's somebody in the comments that wrote on their podcast on their show and they're mentioning about the ball right and they're yeah. talking about the pro s1 and then no they um, were talking about the vulcan ball they were talking about the Vol- they were talking about the Vulcan ball. They were talking about the Vulcan ball, but then I think the Pro S one, the soccer Pro S one, was brought up in topic in that. No, here, I'll, okay. I'll I'll walk you through this. I'll oh walk, yes, I'll walk, walk this through. through. Let you. the audience know. Let the audience know. This was one of the silliest things ever, and Jimmy never responded. So I'd love to know if he would. I I'll just tell the story. Okay, so it was the same week we released our pod, and we talked about the Vulcan ball sucking. Yes. Okay, and we released that, put that out there, whatever, and then. Someone comments because, you know, Jimmy and Tyler do their ad reads or whatever. Got to get paid. And and, um, yep. and they are they, talking. They're, they're, they're talking up the Vulcan ball. Yeah, you for know? sure. And someone in the comments goes, they, someone had to actually screenshot this and send it to me. They uh, they said something to the effect of, if you want an actual unbiased review of this ball, go listen to Chris and Will's podcast because they actually <laughs> tell, tell you how it is. So Jimmy comments and says something to the effect of, you know that Chris is sponsored by one of the largest pickleball brands in pickleball and is they also make a competing ball, right? <laughs> yeah. And then someone <laughs> someone sends me that comment. And I'm sitting there going, what? I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Sponsored. I was like, I haven't been sponsored by anyone. And then I was right. like, wait, it's... is Jimmy Miller actually confusing me with Will? That's right. I was like, if <laughs> if that's the case... Someone as prominent as that should not be mixing. Like people mix you and I up all the time, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. That should never happen for someone like Jimmy. Uh, I he doesn't watch us enough. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So I guess maybe we're not he cool did. to make it on the list. <laughs> yeah, but also I'm technically not sponsored by them, but I am an employee. <laughs> you are an employee of them. 
Yeah. Which I also thought it was funny because I was like, this comment just seems so out of pocket. Because I was like, okay, I don't think I have ever heard you like, I don't know that you've ever said anything like bad about the Pro S1, but, but I also don't think I've ever heard you like overly praise it other than that you think it gets a lot of spin. But I was like, dude, I was, I just like started recalling everything. I was like, the Pro S1, I was like, I've written a newsletter about it going out around. I've talked about that on a podcast. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think the ball is great in the cold, but it definitely can go out around. I even actually, we talked about that last week, I think. So I yeah. was just like, I was so confused. So I wrote a whole comment and was like, Jimmy, I was like, are you thinking of Will? I was like, I'm not sponsored by a paddle company. It was like, yeah. in fact, that's like <laughs> half my brand is not being sponsored. And I never got a response, but I was just like, nah. what is going on right now? I was like, what the heck? He didn't have time to respond other than that. Or he just, you know, he found out that he don't flubbed and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay well for here's here's the thing jimmy we'll forgive you once i'll if that was a mistake <laughs> i'll give you a mistake but definitely the wrong guy to say sponsored by the biggest pickleball company in yeah. pickleball if you said it by me you know it would have been i mean i would have let it slide i was like okay it's not the same thing but i get what you mean though so it would have been fine but yeah i thought that was funny that he so thought wait was, hang on yeah. hang on wait yeah, yeah, in yeah. one week let me get this straight i'm yeah. gonna recap this for yes. everyone uh-huh uh-huh are yeah. you ready for this I'm ready. Will doesn't even vote for us on the Dink Awards. That could have been nope. the reason we didn't get third. <laughs> Will <laughs> Will gets a Willinator paddle, even though I love the six zero double black diamond. Hey, I like and the then, black diamond. Shoot, man, come and on. And then on top of that, yeah. I catch a stray bullet from Jimmy Miller himself mm. about being a shill when I don't even work for a paddle company. <laughs> Dude, I know you just catching things left and right. It's too easy, you know. What I'm well, saying? you must have like the charisma on like level three thousand because you are dodging it's, all the bullets. It's over nine thousand. Get it right, Chris. You know, shoot. Dude. <laughs> what do I got to do? Do I got to start like wearing my hat backwards? Is that giving oh, yeah. me like more cool points? <laughs> Am I cool now? Hey, uh, wait. Maybe if I do this, if I put them on top, my cool. No, put them. No, put them. Put them actually on your eyes right now. All right, guys. Am I cool now. Yeah, I think yeah, just just a little bit. I think your duper actually might have gone up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't. Hey, if y'all watching out there, let us know. Let's get like, hey, somebody screenshot this, and dude, you're a total meme right now. Oh my gosh, that's hat, so funny. Hat backwards, Chris is definitely at least 4.0 at worst. That's mm. so funny. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, yeah, that's a funny story about that. I do really want to. I also, I'm just going to make this very clear now so this does not get misunderstood later. Oh, what? I do not have any actual beef. There is no beef here. Oh, yeah. People do not need to go out and like make this something <laughs> that it isn't. Loose. I just thought it was really funny that of all the people in Pickleball to pick, I'm the one that gets presented <laughs> as the sponsored chill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's Ugh. why it's so easy to try and have beef with you because there's none to be had because you're a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. You're not. I am not a vegetarian. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> okay. Anyways, before we move on, this was like one of my more main topics I wanted to talk about. Do you have anything yep. like gear wise you wanted to go over? Mm, no. no. Okay. No, 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 no. Cool. All right. So what I wanted to talk about next was a lesson that I took and we actually You've been filmed lessons? this lesson. More? Yeah, I took two. Two? I took, I took the one again so that it was kind of like an not a refresher, but we went over some more stuff, also see my progress, and then we filmed it because I really wanted to make a video out of it because yeah. I think it'd be good for everyone else. But basically, I took took another lesson on my counters. They've actually gotten, I got one of the best compliments ever. In fact, this is how I knew my counters got better. You know David Payne, right? Yes, yes, David so, Payne. So for very those that player. don't know, he's a buddy of mine in Minnesota. He's a very good player. He has The thing he is known for is he's got very fast hands. He is not afraid of the ball. He hits the ball hard. Like, I, you should, I never beat him in hands. That's all you should know. If I beat him in hands, it's because I got really lucky. I played <laughs> with him this last week. And, and the first, like, few games, mm -hmm. I just kept beating him in hands. And then I started oh, joking. I was you like. beat David in hands. Yeah. I started yeah. beating. And he starts going. He's like, that ball doesn't come back. He's like, what just happened? And he was, like, losing <laughs> it. And so I started keeping track. I'd be like, David, that's three hands battles to zero that I've won. Oh, and snap. I was like, man, this lesson's paying <laughs> off. So then, then you know, it turned into a whole thing where he just, if he got a dink, he would just speed it up at me. But before he would speed it up, he would just say, hand battle, and then just launch the ball <laughs> at me. <laughs> Imagine if you called your shots before you actually played. I, we should actually kind of do that. I think that would dink. 
Yeah. Slow ding. top spin dink. <laughs> Hand bat. <battle. laughs> <laughs> Drive. But here's drop, what's funny. Lob. He started beating me when he started saying that. And I was telling my group, I was like, it's actually harder when he announces that he's going to speed it up at me <laughs> because now I'm thinking too hard about where the ball might go. Oh, I was thinking he was messing with you. He's like, oh, hands. And then he just kind of drops it or oh. lobs it over you or something. Nope. He just smacked it right at me. Oh, dang. I mean, I totally would have, you know, <laughs> I totally would have done something different just to mess with you. But dang, that's, he's an that's honest so guy. funny. No, but yeah, I can. I it was great playing against him and actually being able to beat him in hands battles and seeing his reaction because I was like, "Dang!" Now I know I'm actually getting because you know how sometimes when you're playing pickleball and you're like you're trying to get better, you're drilling whatever. Sometimes you just don't feel it. Like you don't mm-hmm. actually know if it's like paying off. So this was the first time where I was like, "Ooh, I can tell this is like going," and it felt good. Mm, nice, nice. Okay, so how did you improve on your hands? What have, have you just been doing the same thing? Uh, maybe you want to refresh the audience memory on, I guess, the actual yeah, drills you've been doing. For sure. So a couple main things we identified <laughs> when we went through it is that pretty much every single time someone sped the ball up at me, I would either go backwards, like either just with my upper body, or I would jump, or I would like flinch, and then I just wasn't hitting. I just wasn't hitting a good ball. So the first thing was like, make my feet stop moving. Cause we also noticed that specifically my left foot was always the one that slid backwards. So locked my feet down. He was like, your feet should not be moving. Need you to lean forward. And then, you know, just some stuff about anticipating the ball better. But first of all, not moving was a big thing. And then just getting over my fear of someone speeding up with the ball at me. And we've talked about, you know, the tennis injury kind of did that to me or whatever. Yeah. But the drill that helped the most is called hardball. <coughs> and it's where you have a guy at the baseline and he, you start off with them hitting like 70% forehand drives at you. Like they just throw a ball up in there and just smack it at you. And then you're just supposed to block it or, uh, you know, counter or whatever. And then you go up slowly. So you go 80, 90, 100. You don't go any higher than 100. Wait, wait, because what do you mean the goal. You mean like- 100% effort, like oh, the person oh. driving the ball. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so you don't go higher than 100% effort because one thing he explained is he was like, it's important to at least keep this realistic because he was like, look, I could blast a ball at 200% effort or whatever, and it's going to blast the back wall every time, but he's like, you're never going to see this, in not never, but so rarely you will see that in a game that it's like pointless to practice. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, the other progression you can do is if you get to that point at 100%, you're like, that's fine. They take a step to like midcourt and do the same thing. Kind of like if you hit a weak return and now someone's coming in for a third shot drive, do the same thing from there. And if you want to make it even harder, I can take a step into the kitchen and be at the net so you just have less time. So I've been doing that a lot with Isaac lately. We'll start off a session with him doing it. We'll often end it doing that. And I found that I'm just less afraid of the ball which has helped significantly so if if you're afraid of the ball like me uh you can do hardball it sucks but it will make you less scared of the ball for sure okay you heard it here first if it can make chris not flinch it's got to be good it's a good drill so it's got to be good it's got to be good (coughs) but uh, another thing on top of that that also was really helpful is i would kind of overthink when someone was going to speed up the ball like what areas they could go to i'm like okay they could try and go around me on my right or my left they could or speed right it up you. or right at me like so i never knew really what to cover so like <clears throat> i just it led to like even if i did get to the ball it was usually a bad ball and he basically told me it was like look you should only worry about like what's within your like immediate Bubble. body he's like if yeah. it's outside your wings he's like you might be able to get that ball occasionally but he's like if they hit that and they manage to snag the line or whatever like if yeah. you're on the right side and they hit you the line right next to you them. yeah he's like yeah it's a good shot if, let them do it again if they can do it uh, they probably can't do it over and over and over you know it's like a one out of ten two out of ten so he's like if you just protect your body and focus on this area you'll be fine so as i've started thinking about that more i'm like okay i'll just give them that shot if they hit it and otherwise yeah. i'm just ready at my body yeah, exactly. So what I'm assuming you're just holding your paddle at what? 11 o'clock, maybe 10 and you're hitting backhands back for the most yeah, part. It's, it's definitely a lot of backhands. I mean, the forehand side, I think everyone knows is just a harder or weaker area to cover. So if I am on the right side, definitely leaning backhand and then uh, 
same, similar on the left side, but I think one thing is just depends on, like, if I'm on the left side and the cross court person has the ball, I'm, like, sticking my forehand out, just, like, waiting and hoping they speed it up towards the middle mm-hmm. now because, you know, you can kind of cover that pretty easily. But, yeah, I think just reframing some of it where it was, like, another way to think about it because in my mind I was like, I have to be able to cover everything. Yeah. And then, which in turn led me to cover absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> or at least not very well. So, mm-hmm. That was uh, really helpful. But I'll have a full video out on this at some point. We're editing it right now. I think it'll be a good video, and I'm excited to keep drilling this because I can feel that this is going to be very helpful for my game. Hmm. That's interesting that you've been taking lessons because in my recent, I guess, pickleball outings, I haven't really been – I've kind of been doing some rec play. I haven't been really drilling that much, although I have kind of been giving lessons to my good friend Janine, helping her with – top spin because on her forehand side she hits super flat and she's trying to get a little bit more power on it and like it's kind of going well but then she just reverts back to just hitting it super flat and like i don't know her hand her arm i I don't know it's different every single time i see it i was like you know what j9 what you got to do is just got to think top spin once you get the feel for top spin down okay then we can move on to you know trying to uh, add power back into your shot her backhand's great but the forehand, I don't know, something's just not clicking. But she's been making mass improvements. I recorded some of it. She told me that any of that footage should never see the light of day or she'd instantly <laughs> defriend me. But I don't know. We'll see. So you're going to you're gonna send it to me to put in the pod, right? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. She's having maybe a heart attack if she's listening to this right now. Oh, she's listening right now. She's yelling right now. She's probably Once she hears it, I'm going to get a random text from her. I already know. <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually have the opposite problem. I hit... Like, I don't, it's not too much topspin, but like my forehand is like always something topspin related that when I try and hit just like a flat slap, I can't do it. Yeah. Hitting slappers are you know, kind of difficult and yeah. it's not, it's really not feasible because the paddles now are just getting super, you know, super poppy and you just can't control it. The ball's like flying out. I feel like, you know, super difficult. Everything has to have some spin some role you know and this is a perfect segue into our next topic which is ben's ben john's backhand roll video which uh you know apparently you must have watched and really liked because you decided to you know put a whole entire section about it so why don't you tell us what you got from that video because i actually didn't watch it i did see it on my thumbnail but like i was like eh yeah i i was actually pretty excited for this one because i i wanted to make my backhand uh, roll better and there was only <clears throat> one thing that I really got out of it but that one thing I was like wow I was like that is actually really helpful and then I was what starting to it? think about my backhand roll and it was literally just he said a common mistake is that when people do this shot one they try and use too much wrist but also they he was just saying like you need to come this is going to sound so stupid when you hear it but like he was saying you just need to come straight up the ball he was saying like a lot of times people come like up and then they go out yes across yep. their body and i immediately thought of mine and why my backhand roll frequently doesn't work and i was like oh it's because i do that so like i went to the wall and i literally just tossed the ball at the wall and then hit some ones where i just rolled straight up and i was like wow that feels way better and then i went back to what i like always did and i was like i see why that doesn't work now mm. so why doesn't it work i mean it's like just something about coming across one my control is way less I feel like I have to strike the ball harder. Whereas like when you just go straight up something about it, one, you'd get better spin and grab on the ball, but also two, I just feel like I'm in better control and I'm not so worried about like just trying to hit the ball hard. I'm kind of just like picking a spot and like rolling it there. It's still going to take like, I'm sure it's going to take lots of drilling before the shot is really even that great for me, but Um, mm -hmm. it was very fast from that one tip. Okay. That's good. I I'm going to just add on. I think, the two tips that I've gotten that have helped me a lot with my backhand uh, roll was number one from Jordan, Jordan Briones, yes. when we went to the boot camp with him. And he said, I mean, and this is all dependent on how low the ball is when you receive the ball. Like if you, if you pick it out of the air, you know, the lower it is, the slower you roll up on the ball, yes. right? Yes. The higher the ball is in relation to the height of the net, you know, the faster you can swing it because if it's low you need to go slow because if you go any faster even if you go straight up at it uh there's not enough give on these paddles for you to 
be able to like spin the ball or get enough RPM so that it dips down, especially if it's coming from a low trajectory, right? So that was the first thing. So the lower it is, the slower you should roll or, you know, and I guess, you know, using less wrist as well. And the second really great tip that I got was actually from Cliff, uh, from Cliff Pickleball, shout out to Cliff. And <clears throat> it was with my backhand roll cross court. Uh, and he says, if you want to get that top spin roll cross court and kind of do that backhand scoop that actually Ben kind of does, he told me that you should always get under the ball. Like the pat, it should be almost like an open face a little bit, right? And he says, once you get under the ball and you go up, once you reach a certain like height where you raise the ball, that's when you start, that's when you can start closing the paddle face, right? To give it more spin and a little bit more speed. And he says, only do this when you go cross court. And then when I did that, it definitely worked. I didn't drill it enough, but uh, it was a very helpful tip. And it just kind of, you know, re-solidified that, you know, sometimes when we're trying to speed up the ball, right, or doing our roll shots, we're thinking a lot of top spin, and we actually brush up on top of the ball too much. But, you know, Cliff, and even with Ben's video, it sounds like, you know, you should always be under the ball, you know, raise up, gather spin, and then you can close the paddle face to give it more speed and potentially more spin. So I think those are the biggest tips that helped me with my backhand roll. Yeah, for sure. No, I think the rolling slower as it's lower also is a really good tip. I think sometimes I was always like, oh, I should be able to attack this ball. And it's like, okay, well, not really. Like, you should just put that ball back in play. So yeah, I think I think both of those are really good. But yeah, definitely go watch Ben's video if you're interested in learning more about it. I thought it was... Uh, Pretty well made video. Uh, definitely something I want to practice more. I think it'll, you know, help along with the counters <coughs> as well. So definitely helpful. But uh, on a similar note, I wanted to give a shout out to Connor Derrickson. So I've been doing like his workout training program since October, November ish, and he's been awesome to work with. I'm sure at this point a bunch of you have seen his stuff on Instagram. But I had been out of the gym for a really long time, and I basically had just come to the conclusion that I was like, I need to get back in the gym because if I have an injury, like something really bad, like if I tore an ACL or ruptured my Achilles or something else, I was like, time off court means I cannot do my job. So I just started <laughs> thinking, I was like, this is actually important for my job. I was like, if I'm out for six months, I'm screwed. Like, that would be bad. <laughs> so bad, real bad. So we started talking and I've been doing this program and I can tell uh, you know, after months of doing this now that like I actually feel a lot stronger than I was. And I'm starting to like feel that on the court in terms of just faster movement, lasting longer. Like it all feels like it's coming together really well. So if you guys want any more information about that, I will leave that link down in the description. Connor's been great. You can check his stuff out on Instagram if you want to get to know him more, but can definitely recommend. I've I've enjoyed it. Yeah, come check out Chris's improvement in person when we hit up Las Vegas this coming uh, week, weekend, by the time you're hearing this. It's going to be the February 24th. We're going to Las Vegas, and we're going to be playing at Sunset Park from 6 to 8 p.m. Shout-outs to uh, Scott from Thrive, and then I think it was Erica Mercado, I want to say, who got the court. It could have been somebody else. I can't quite remember but we got a court time there for like two hours some other people are going to come out and uh me you brayden from pickleball effect and john q we're going to be there kind of doing a meet and greet playing some pickleball uh shoot it's gonna be a good time who do you think uh -oh, we, we, go. we we got like you and me on a team john and brayden who do you think's winning that we're winning that for sure are you kidding me I just I wasn't sure. I figured I figured, uh, to be honest what I expected you to say was, "Are you kidding me, Chris? I have a 3-5 on my team and you think we can win that?" That's what I thought you were going to say. No, no, no. You you got it. It's you got to have a little bit of win somewhere. I mean, shoot, you don't you need the paddle this week and, you know, <laughs> shoot. Like I said, you got to have a win bullets. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You catch your bullets from from Jimmy. Shoot. Nah, I got to give you a win and I am going to give you a win when we play them. Shoot, I'll carry you on my back. If I, I'll play 2v1 if I have to. Just get off the court. I'm going to win this for us. Okay? That's what's going to happen. I'll, I think I'll do it myself is what you meant to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's so funny. We, we should definitely do that, though. I'm actually I'm super excited to play against John and Brayden because I haven't gotten to play John in doubles. And mm -hmm. I've only played him in singles like over a year ago now. 
And I, I think he said he's like, you know, not a huge singles player. And then Braden obviously never played him, but I know he's a really good pickleball yeah. player. Uh, yeah. He plays five O tournaments all the time. So I'm sure mm-hmm. he will be, he will be really solid, but I think it'd just be super fun to, to play yeah. you guys. Yeah, no, it's going to be awesome. And I think there's going to be some pros, I think that are coming out too. Grant Bond might show up. We might get, I don't know. We, we might get some, some play time. It's going to be a good time. If anything, just come out and say what's up to us, you know, grab some photos, ask us questions. We'll give you shout outs on the pods. It's if very you remember. presumptuous <laughs> that you think people might want a photo with you. Oh, uh, me? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. People wanted photos with you when you went to California. So I can only imagine me, you know, having my own signature paddle and everything like, you know, <laughs> just kidding, guys. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay. Somebody's yeah, yeah. got to put this guy in this. I'm I'm going to body bag you when I see you. Oh, perfect. I That's just, I, I got to humble you. Please. I'm going to make sure I bring a Dura. <laughs> Please humble me. Gosh. I'm, I'm going to body bag you at the airport just so it's easier to call 911. <laughs> At the airport, I'm flying back home. After that's like Chris body bagged me. I gotta find a new career. I'm out of here. Peace out, guys. Oh my gosh, jeez Louise. But okay. Anyways, moving on to the kitchen. I just had one thing I wanted to kind of wrap up the pod with uh, that I thought was kind of interesting that I'm dabbling with. Also, shout out to all of you who made it to the kitchen last week because there were <coughs> a ton of you in the comments. One mm-hmm. that said you made it to the kitchen. But also that said you really enjoyed the topic because Will and really? I talked about this yeah. before the pod and after. And I was like, dude, no one is going to care about this. But I'm doing this just because yeah, I think it would be good chest. to talk about. Yeah. Dude, tons people of people it. liked it. So Dang, I was. You guys are nerds out there. Dang. <laughs> like, that's all I got to say. Because, you know, I'm somewhat of a nerd, but I'm somewhat not. Like, but we were talking about it and I was kind of just like, yeah, I was kind of checking out. So I was like, if I'm checking out. I thought everybody else would have been fast asleep by now or, you know, on to the next podcast or something. I know why we got fifth now. Why? It's, it's because you call our fans slash viewers nerds. Oh, this is there, why there we go. got fifth. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with being a nerd. Everybody's a nerd about something. Come on now. Shoot. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, on, anyways, look, I thought everybody who's cool. listening to the pod, everybody's listening to the pod, all pickleball players out there. Are, ner- are pickleball nerds let's be real we're hitting a plastic ball over a net we're nerds about pickleball let's be real in different probably. aspects but we are <laughs> probably and if you're probably. and if you and if anybody else out there thinks that they're not they lie to themselves that's all i'm saying all right well anyways what i want to talk about this week a little less nerdy a little more applicable to you pickleball players out there but <laughs> so we're going to uh, Vegas to do this like paddle fitting thing with Thrive because that's something they do with some of their pros. Um, and I've we've talked about this on prior podcast episodes. I've said for a while mm-hmm. that I think this is something that will become more standard as soon as people have more access to these tools, which I'm just saying, okay, this isn't like cheap for the lay person, but to buy a Brafitti swing weight machine and twist weight machine like all the tools and balance it's probably like 300 320 it's 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 like price of a paddle so if you really care about like matching paddles or you're a pro shop you could easily buy these tools and learn how to use them they are not complicated things that like you have to be smart to use the initial setup's a little tricky after that very easy to use anyways I've said for a while, I think paddle fittings will become more of a thing. That's what we're going to Vegas for. He kind of wanted to explain how he does it with his pros. So I started thinking about this a lot. And I was like, okay, I think that a lot of people believe they want their paddle set up a certain way when it may not even be optimal for them or that they're doing it for the wrong reasons. For Mm -hmm. example, a lot of people think, oh, I just need a paddle that weighs 8.5 ounces. And like... That doesn't mean anything. If all 8.5 ounces are in the handle versus in the head, <coughs> completely different paddles. Like they're not even yeah. remotely similar. Yes. So as I started thinking about, I was like, okay, I kind of want to do this and test this with some people I know. So yeah. I'm actually going to do two paddle fittings after this Thrive one because I want to see how he does it and if maybe the way I'm thinking about it could be more How optimized. you would do it like your yeah. way. So you have a procedure that you want to employ with people that you know or with yourself or with whom with probably with people i know like this isn't a service i'm probably ever going to offer or something but i want to make a video about it and just explain to people so here's here's kind of the approach that i would 
want to take with it is I would have three or four of the same paddle. Ideally, it's that person's preferred paddle. For example, yep. uh, Isaac's paddle is the filth. So I asked Doug from Bread and Brother, I said, hey, can you send me three filths? Mm-hmm. Because I want to do this video. So what I would do is I would... I'm not going to probably say exactly how to do this. So Isaac, oh, you're trying know. to keep it a. Oh, okay, I see, I see. But yeah, what I would do is. is I would set up three different paddles in three very different configurations, and I would cover all the lead tape, over grip, everything is the same, so you don't know which one is which. I how would, would mark you cover them with it up numbers. You can still like you can still see. You can for sure, but I would just put the handle paddle in his hand and just say like, look, just you know, you're gonna blindfold him. No, yeah, I mean, unless you're looking, if you black it all out, you have to look at it. So I'm just be like, just don't look at where the, you know, don't look at the edge of the paddle. Okay. You know, who, okay. No one's going like this. So, but three distinct setups and then say like, okay, once you've landed on, I really liked this one, mm-hmm. then I would take that paddle and start customizing it in a few different spots, hand it back, see, and then I would move it from there. But the reason I want to do three distinct setups initially is one, I think it would be quicker because the setup, the way I want to set these up, they would feel very different. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm very curious to do this. I'm going to do it with both my brothers. I think it'll be kind of fun. And yeah. one of the things that I'm curious to do, or I've been messing with this week, is balance of paddles. So I know Braden and um, John, John, they measure they balance. balance. Mm-hmm. And yes. I haven't ever done those stats. And the only reason is because I just hadn't thought of how balance it's not that i've never thought about it it's i didn't have a good way to explain to people here's how this balance actually translates on the court like this number means this like swing weight right 120 probably means heavy 105 it means it's fast yep obviously a lower balance point gonna feel more maneuverable heavier yada yada yada. but i didn't know where the cutoffs were so i'm experimenting with that myself and i will say in the few experiments i've done so far i've actually been quite surprised and i think let in the handle yeah just well how certain balances feel like Uh how many points head heavy the paddle is yep i there's some interesting experiments i'm going to actually i think i might even do one with you john and brayden yeah you should i'm just i'm going to give you guys like two paddles not a whole fitting but i have an interesting thing that i think i might be able to fool you guys with or something that it won't be what you expect but we'll see i don't know we'll see We'll I think I get. I think I could get you, but I don't, you John and Braden might be trickier. You you say that you think I don't know these things, but you have to understand that back in the day, I was stringing and customizing tennis rackets for quite some time. So like, I thought I thought to be honest, I thought what you were gonna say was, you know, mm-hmm. you can say that about me, Chris, but I'm the one with a paddle. <laughs> No, no, no. no. I was... <laughs> that would have been too much, you know? That would have been too much. I'm already looking like an idiot out here. It was saying the things that I've said, so it's That's okay. So funny. I need to dial it but, down just a little bit. But yeah, I, I do think balance will have become a more relevant metric, or at least I think it has the possibility to. So something I'm dabbling with and will probably make a video on in the future after I kind of finish out some more tests and have some more like definitive, like here's kind of what this translates to. Because yeah. I one thing I think people have maybe noticed, maybe they haven't, I can be pretty slow to like start adding things. Like obviously I haven't been doing balance for a long time. And the only reason is because when I present it, I want to have it very clear what each thing means. And why it matters. And it's like, yeah, and why it matters. Like I don't want to just give someone a number for number's sake. And I'm not saying that John or, or Braden do that, to be clear. I, I'm glad they actually have the database of it. Um, cause now I can kind of look through theirs and be like, oh, okay, that's where these paddles normally fall or whatever. But I just, it just feels weird to me to like do it without knowing anything about it. So that's why I haven't ever done it. All right. So shoot, yeah. you're going all out, even becoming more of the paddle nerd. Shoot. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see <laughs> Dude, it. Dude, John, John's got like all I sorts know. of wacky things. He's like blasting paddles with the, like. John well, is John, on it, man. John, of course, John is on. John is an archaeologist by trade, so I imagine that the things that he is excavating, he is like looking for very fine and minute details. So, and he's documenting it all. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure paddles is like a walk in the park for him. That's all I'm saying. Dude, think about this: this yeah. trip that we have coming up. If only we could bring Shay with. Shay would lose his mind because it would be like that time we were in Arizona where we wake up at like 6 a.m. immediately talking about paddles. 
with <laughs> yeah. four people. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I might lose my mind talking because I love paddles as much, like you know, as much as you guys. But you guys are on, a, on another level. You know, what we have to do is we have to divvy up what we are going to talk about on each other's podcast. So no, can, literally, some I was overlap. texting John about this because I was actually telling him. He was like, I'm drafting some notes right now. And then we were talking about like, should it be a pod that goes on all of ours or should we do part one, part two, part three? And I was like, let's just get everything and then we can talk about it because yeah, there's going to be a lot of overlap without a doubt. There's going to be some overlap. I don't know. I might have to moderate you guys and make sure it's, I don't know, <laughs> it's not too crazy or too technical on one side. I might do a portion where... The, like a non-boring portion i'm gonna ask some random questions because there's probably hey some now, things that non -boring people non-boring portion yeah non-boring portion yes it's part of my maybe brand that's, now maybe that's your... why you have the paddle and we don't why it's because y'all boring yeah that must be it <laughs> dale are we boring to you me john Braden, we're boring but will's the cool guy i'm, I'm never gonna let you or dale live this down ever. oh you're not... <laughs> yes i'm changing Guys. your name after this to show kirk to in my phone Show Kirk Willinator <laughs> or Willinator the Show Kirk. I got to go on Discord. I need to see now. I need to see what the comments are saying because I was trying not to like, you know, say it, it was really hard to not tell anybody about this, keeping this tight lip. Here's here's the other funny thing. Dale messages me and he was like, yeah, I tried messaging Will on Discord, but he didn't respond. Maybe I'll have to email him. And I was like, Will never opens Discord. And I was like, Dale. I see my Discord all the time. I respond whenever you message me, probably, unless I'm asleep oh, and you're awake or whatever. And I'm like, Will's got the audacity to not even respond to you. And somehow this guy, <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about this one for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm cool like that. What can I say? Shoot. You know what? Uh, Let's do this. Let's see. This is the, this is, you made it, you made it into the kitchen and now you're doing the dishes. That's how deep you are. Let yes. us know down in a comment. <laughs> Who's cooler? Me or Will? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to see the results of that. <laughs> I'm just saying. To, to be I'm just honest, they, they might say it's you I just think to it's spite me. Be you. I think they might. I, I think they just vote for you just to spite me, man. Or they're just gonna you're just gonna vote for you just to increase your self esteem a bit. And they're like, oh man, he's already he's he's already three five. Come on, we can't have his you know his mental state even worse. You know, shoot. <sighs> Here's a little so handout funny. for you, Chris. Mm, mm. I'll take it. I need it. I'm on the ground. I've been getting all right, kicked. Here, all right. All right. I'll say one last thing. It'd be funny though. This paddle actually comes out and releases. I technically haven't hit with it yet, um, but if it comes out and like, what if it's bad or what if I don't like it? <laughs> just, just think, that just, would just, be, I, I just think about that scenario. Just think about that scenario. You know, <laughs> you hate it and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> there's all right, rent, all right here's rent free in my brain here's the thing here's the thing okay i'm sure it's gonna be good six zero they make great paddles and here's the thing if i got it and i didn't like it i would never ever tell you or i would never ever tell anybody that i didn't like it. i'm just gonna tell you right now that's how <laughs> i would never tell anybody that and taking that Yet secret again. to my grave Yet again, just to call back to earlier, Jimmy Miller saying, I'm the show. This guy's like, bro, if it's bad, I'm not even going to tell you it's bad because it's got my <laughs> name on it. <laughs> bro. Of course it's not. Of course it's going to be good. Are you kidding me? I know. I already know it's going to be good. All right. Let's call it here before I, you know, probably you lose, have, lose like you lose a brain cell or something. This might be my favorite episode we've done so far. Yeah. I took all the way up to episode 74 and you got your favorite episode. <laughs> Yeah, it's the look on your ah. face right now. It's the, the <laughs> amount of smugness I have right now within me building up is un, unmatched. You know, if you were here with me, like the feeling would be palpable. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> we'll catch you guys next week. We'll see. We'll, see if we'll still hear next week. We'll see if he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> Say what's up to Ed for me, guys. All right, bye. Peace.